What's up, everybody? Black Widow Volvo Channel here. If you look around me, the garage is a little bit cleaner, a little bit more organized because I am setting up for a move. We are going to be moving locations here soon, hopefully. And I look a little weathered and beaten because I'm a little weathered and beaten. Anyway, Today we're going to discuss some things about MicroSquirt. A couple little things that I've found. I'm no pro. Uh, I consider myself an amateur still. But I'm learning. And always trying to get better. This is a little power grid I made. Uh, this has fuses right here. Main power coming in constantly. Going to the relays. This is the power coming out of the relays. And this is the switched 12 volt signal to the relays. Pretty easy to troubleshoot. Everything exposed right here on these two ends. And this over here is not. With the key off, everything is not powered. Except for over here. Put some screws down in it, mounted it pretty easy to troubleshoot and uh, made things a lot easier to deal with for adding and subtracting components which there is a lot of a couple other things to remember on the wiring of microsquirt I used two different harnesses and merged into one at first and then I ended up making my own and then I went back and revised my own so it was a couple different processes. I suggest not making it on a bench or a table. I suggest making it on the car. Getting all your links right. Getting all your setup right. Getting everything routed right like you want to. Getting it pre-made mostly. And then pulling it out of the car and finishing and tidying it up and putting it back in. That way you know the process. Don't use electrical tape. Please, please don't use electrical tape. Okay? Electrical tape will peel off of everything and anything anywhere at any time for any reason and stain everything and just be a pain in the neck if you need to tie down your loom use zip ties or safety wire or some people have even uh, discussed some kind of silicone sealing tape that sounds awesome but I would have to try it just stay away from the electrical tape I don't care if it's you know static free whatever 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 it doesn't have a place in an engine compartment, much less a turbo heating engine compartment. So stay away from it. I read a couple times and misunderstood a couple times what the ground qualifications for the MicroSquirt were. And they are as follows in pretty plain English, easy to read, somehow difficult for me to comprehend at first. The ground needs to be where the engine ground originally is. So you can follow the battery. My battery's in the trunk now, it used to be right here. Follow the battery, the negative terminal, follow it to where it goes to the engine block and bolts to the engine block. That's where you need to ground the MicroSquirt box itself. That is the only spot you need to ground it at. You need to ground it right where it comes from the negative terminal. The MicroSquirt as a result has grounds in its harness for two sensors uh, one individual sensor and then another ground for all the other sensors and those grounds are very important because one of the grounds is for the map sensor and it's a 5 volt sensor and that 5 volt sensor also needs a 5 volt ground don't put a 12 volt ground on it so that's important the other ground is for the rest of the sensors like the manifold air temperature your throttle position uh, sensor uh, other things like that uh, i'm trying to think if the tps has a dedicated ground i don't think so uh, so those other grounds you know, like the coolant sensors and stuff like that you want to ground uh, off the harness of the microscope you want to ground them off the harness of the microsquirt because if you don't, you will get fluctuating sensor readings. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about here real quickly. Uh, let's see if we got it set up. Go into my laptop here. 
and we are going to get in here and look at some stuff right quick. We're going to go in a tuner studio. We're going to open it up and we're going to turn the car on and look. Alright, so right now, Tuner Studio is not connected. I'm going to turn the key System. on and connect it. System ready. Key is on. We're ready. So what we don't want to see is like an exaggeration of what I have on the engine map gauge. You see how it's kind of jumping around 99.3, 99.7. Well, this is a 5 bar map sensor. So it's going to jump around a little bit with atmospheric pressure. Um, what I'm talking about really is an exaggeration of that where the needle is like bouncing. You can physically see the needles are moving with the car off. And that is a severe indication that you've got a sensor issue or a wiring issue. Because the voltage is having noise problems. So either your ground is having noise issue with the circuit that you might be pulling voltage from. Like for example I had a noise issue from the way I wired this uh, wideband here. I had wired it to an accessory and the accessory would overload the circuit and the wideband would flip on and off. So you have to run you know, your dedicated relay and your dedicated circuit for those type of things to not overload the circuit and to also make sure that you're getting a clear, crisp signal because these sensors all work off electrical signals. So the clearer, more crisp you can get that signal, the better your tune will be, the better everything will be. Uh, the less time you waste troubleshooting a bunch of nonsense that uh, you essentially may have created. A couple things about the micro squirt that I love. Uh, first off, the do-it-yourself aspect. There's a lot of do-it-yourself information on the internet if you're willing to take the time to Google search. And most of the stuff you can find literally on Google search. I wired in a ignition system from a DSM and it ran out of capability around 400 wheel. Um, that was my experience from it. That's probably not indica indicating any max capacity that it can really do, but in my experience that was what I was having problems with at 400 wheel, so I changed to LS1 cool packs. So I had to rewire my whole ignition system and remove an ignition igniter and put in coal packs that had built-in igniters so the wiring was different and I eliminated, eliminated a lot of wiring as a result of that which is great and it was actually pretty straightforward but you got to do your research and you got to check it and triple check it and double check it uh, you know <laughs> all that stuff do it a little bit about this stuff I found when I was setting up my tack here recently for the LS1 cool pack change that I could only get when the car was idling a signal of like 200 RPM when it was idling and that wasn't going to cut it and then when I revved it it didn't change so I did a lot of research trying to figure out what what is what you know what, what am I going to do do I need to get an ignition Amplifier, what do you know? Do I need some kind of adapter, some kind of signal changer? I had the adapter the from the DSM to change the tack signal, and that worked, but it wouldn't work for the LS1s. So I did some research and finally found in basic load and general settings on the Tuner Studio software that there's a TACO output menu screen and it was turned off. From the factory, it was turned off, but it's labeled on the wire, so I had to turn it on. I mean, imagine how tough that was for me. Can you imagine how stressful that situation was? Can you imagine? It was ridiculous. I didn't like it at all. But here it is. I found it. That's it. That That's the one. Yep, that's the one I need. I turned it on, and it was amazing. It was like the angels of Red, Lo Red Block Jesus were singing at me. 
full song, in perfect harmony, because my tack worked. And now I have my shift light back. So, cool feature there. Probably knew about it. I didn't. Make fun of me. Whatever. Leave a comment. Let's go into fuel settings. Fuel settings. So how this computer works is you set up your target air fuel ratios. These are my target air fuel ratios. I'm running on E85. So it might be a little bit different than your regular street car. However, this is a regular street car. State inspection. Cold AC. Heater. Stereo. Streetcar. So you set your AFRs up and then your VE table is what your injectors are actually doing and engine volumetric efficiency. Now my scaling is way off. I have a five bar map sensor. So this is map right here. This is engine pressure that it runs off of uh, right here on this side and this is RPM on this side. And these are all your fuel cells. This is what tells your injector to give how much fuel. So the higher the number, the more fuel. The higher the number, the more efficiency. Up here, the motor basically doesn't run in that area uh, because this is idle and it can only make boost where it climbs. <laughs> I don't have a small turbo car, so it appears to be laggy, but it may surprise you. So right here is idle, and essentially. Over here is kind of cruising area, revving down the RPM, kind of cruising on the highway, cruising around town, and then full boost, full throttle runs, depending on where your boost at is around in here. So that's how that works. Now, when you get into these things like Tune Analyze, sometimes, and this is a self-tuning program, you hit start, and the car literally starts tuning for you. It starts monitoring right here, it starts telling you the cell changes right here, uh, and it starts changing stuff. Now, I stopped it right now, but let's say at idle, it keeps changing stuff, and it pisses me off, and I've had it perfect, and the computer keeps resetting and saying, no, I got a better idea, this is the way it's supposed to go. And you're like, no, nah, man, no, 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 look here, see. So you hit all these, select all, boom, bam, right click, boom, and then we hit lock selected cells. Lock them, they're locked, the computer doesn't change it, all is good. Now it'll try to tune over everything else and that's what it does so let's unlock them unlock it boom unlocked so now it'll tune again so that's how you do that it's pretty useful information rick gentry taught me that trick appreciate that rick also keep in mind uh kenny howard also helped me set up the majority of this this whole deal here to get this car to run and he even supplied me with a base map to get it running which was freaking stellar so props out to him. He's doing his thing. Got his dyno shop. Got his 9 second Volvo. He's rebuilding. Probably be 8 seconds. 4 mine will even be on the track. Good for him. Best of luck. He's a good guy. So let's do something else. Let's do. Let's minimize this. And let's go into Mega Log Viewer. Mega Log Viewer is the data log program that runs behind Tuner Studio. So in order to set Mega Log Viewer up, you have to go through Tuner Studio to set up your sensor parameters and stuff like that so that they'll be viewed perfectly on this program. So it takes a little bit getting used to, but after knowing that simple little bit of information, it'll help you a long ways on how to set it up. So let's go into, I have a bunch of data logs here from a bunch of different events and things and such and so forth. So let's do, um, shoot, uh, let's do alcohol now on. Yeah, that was after the dyno, maybe a week or so after the dyno. Uh, so here I've set up all my stuff this is my fuel maps this is my ignition maps and in real time down here we have let's see the play button so we can play this in real time so let's let's play it so you see kind of stuff's bouncing around you're like oh yeah you got something running some things are happening RPM's changing, the fuel maps and fuel cells are changing on fuel demand. Okay, so it's running, and we see the time scale down here. And then, 
So let's hit stop on that or pause. And let's go over here and max boost. It's pretty cool because it gives you the max and the minimum of everything you did that whole log. So that's boost in white. And so that would be white right here. You know, and it gives you your number down here where it's currently at. It's not in boost. Um, so let's say we want to see all the things that were happening at this event right here when we hit max boost to 22.2. So we right click and we go down to boost or map, whatever you prefer, and jump to max. 22.2. So there's the event where it was at 22.2, uh, all the parameters of what was going on there. And so this is cool when you're trying to pinpoint a problem at a certain area and you know where that area is but you can't find it but you've got to bring these tables into this data log stuff in order to understand it you have to make sure all your sensor parameters are correct and reading correctly so you have to go back and forth between these two programs several times to make sure that you know 22 pounds is what 22 pounds says this is <laughs> uh, because sometimes they can get screwed up because you're using because there's so many different varieties of sensors to use for these applications I mean they they can they can work on anything I and mean, I could run a Briggs and Stratton motor off this thing if I wanted to it's it's pretty powerful what's really neat about this is you can go back in here and retune uh, let's say we're right here at 22 pounds and we're a little lean we can fatten this up by selecting these cells selecting them all going up in here and adding how many ever let's add four or whatever so you add four you increase by four you clicked it okay boom done let's say we did that okay well that's fine but that didn't save it to the ECU this is a data log software program remember this only does data logging but does it then you can go to save tune so let's go to save tune all right save tune oh it popped up my other icon I always leave tuner studio running in the background when I'm checking my data log software because it'll give me problems if I don't know that might be specific to my old junk laptop I don't know uh, it could be a real deal. So let's pull it up here. Tuner Studio is saying, hey, you got something going on. Somebody's trying to change something. Yeah, would you like to change it? Well, you'd click yes if you'd like to make those changes. I don't because I didn't make a change. And so you can also you can change settings through your data log while running this with it completely out of your car unplugged. You don't have to have your computer in your car plugged in while doing this. So this is something that you can tune while you're sitting on your couch in your house. Carburetor, guys. Eat it up. So this is just a couple quick things about what I've found and how I've messed with stuff and the bad experiences and the good and kind of the key points in between of what I feel like people should know about uh, this stuff when they're setting it up.